Happy New Year, hockey fans! We are back at it here in the neutral zone on IE Sports Radio. The NHL celebrated the new year with the Winter Classic between the Minnesota Wild and the St. Louis Blues. For anybody that has ever worried about hockey being played outdoors in Southern California, here was your cure. It was cold in Minnesota, but that didn't stop the teams from playing a great game. We will break down that one. Plus, last week, goals, goals, and more goals were scored. We had two hat tricks in one game. We had a five goal lead not being enough. We had just scoring galore last week. Zach and I will break it all down. Plus, there was a hockey fan playing doctor earlier this season between the Vancouver Canucks and the Seattle Kraken. We will talk about that awesome story and how social media helped the Vancouver Canucks find the fan in question. And then finally, the best rule in all of hockey, nay, possibly in all of sports, came out in a big way again, this time in the ECHL. We're talking about the emergency backup goalie came into effect in the minor leagues. Pretty cool stuff. We have got all that and more coming up. This is The Neutral Zone. And once again, welcome on in to the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am Adam. Zach Puplis is along with us tonight doing things remotely. He liked it so much last week, he decided he would do that again. Happy New Year, Zach. How you doing? Happy New Year to you, Adam. I'm great. How are you? I'm hanging in there, all all said and told. Been a, uh, it was a, a busy weekend, unexpectedly. I got to take in a ton of sports, including a very cold, but very, very entertaining winter classic, made up for the fact that my Blackhawks were absolutely abysmal on New Year's Day. Woof. <laughs> uh Ah, as we as we sit here, I'm sorry. I got to get trying to get the uh, the link for the uh, for the read pulled up here. So without any further ado, we of course still have our sponsors here at IE Sports Radio, starting with the Southern California Warriors Semi Pro Football Team. The world of semi pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes. Whether it's playing to get filmed to try out for professional teams big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Find them on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors, and Facebook, the Southern California Warriors. And Background Check International. Businesses, are you looking to background check a new hire on? Let Kit Fremen take care of that for you. Kit founded and has managed Background Check International since 1994, and he's here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit and let him help make the hiring process that much easier. This business is used for professional background checks and not for the use of any crimes such as identity theft or any other illegal activity. Go to their website, bcint.com, or find them on Facebook at Background Check International BCI. And then IE Sports Radio, we are available on all the major platforms at IE Sports Radio, whether that is Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. You can go to all those places or just go to our website, iesportsradio.com. Also, if you go there, be sure to check out our Patreon link. Yes, IE Sports Radio is on Patreon now because for the last seven and a half years, we've been bringing you outstanding, amazing content ranging from 
interviewing legendary athletes to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities. We have 32 shows going on now. And all the while, we're still by the fans for the fans. But we need your help. With your help, we're able to take that next step, get into even more cities, bring you even better content. But we're not just asking for money to have money. No, 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 no. You get stuff out of this too. Starting at just $5 a month, that's that's the, the starting tier. For $5 a month, you get a shout out on all of our shows. Thank you to at Bay Area Raised and at M Los Great for continuing to support us on Patreon. But then there's higher tiers. Higher tiers include IE Sports Radio merchandise. We've got t-shirts and hats and sweatshirts. Angela makes some awesome holiday ornaments. You get access to our podcasting university. Larry runs that. You even would get a chance to do a segment on the defining moment with the one and only Larry B. Thank you all so very much for continuing to support us here at IE Sports Radio. We really do appreciate it. Other things you can find on the website too, our fan of the month. The most recent fan of the month is Chris from Massachusetts. He is a member of Bills Mafia. He's got to be excited and anxious for this weekend because I know the Bills are one game away from clinching a playoff berth and trying to keep my personal prediction of a Bills Super Bowl victory alive. So go to the website, find all the cool stuff there. This show is also available for you on Twitter. You can interact with us at IESR Neutral Zone. You can find me personally on Twitter at Adam underscore Karnick or Zach is available at The Pupless. And without any further ado, I think I have stalled long enough for Zach to finish up with his notes and for me to get everything pulled up on my phone. Zach, take it away. <clears throat> yes, sir. Well, after our show last week, uh, we had quite the game. Uh, Sharks and Coyotes combined for 15 goals. <laughs> I know Gene has got to be excited about that. Gene is in the in the chat room tonight saying, go Sharks. 15 right. goals. That, when you score seven goals in a game and lose, something is wrong. That is absurd. We have, like you said, goals, goals, and more goals. Goals galore. <laughs> it's just, just, yeah. But, but. Yeah. How did how did the scoring break down on that one? Give it give us a quick lowdown. What were the what were the scoring streaks there for that game? Sure. Uh, so I mean it was video game numbers, and it's really surprising that uh, Connor McDavid and Edmonton weren't involved. You know? <laughs> no kid. Yeah. Where's Leon Draisaitl? Where's Connor McDavid and all this nonsense? What are the Coyotes <laughs> doing scoring seven goals? That's what I want to know. <laughs> right. Where did that come from? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But we'll, you know, put a, put a pin in that. We'll get to that later because Edmonton had their own amazing game with lots of goals against the Devils. That happened Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so it was pretty much a back and forth, um, back and forth affair. The goals happened; they, they were from everybody and their brother. I mean, I look at this list and okay, so this is for the Sharks. You got Barbanov, Bonino, Simic. Veal, Meyer, Hurdle, Couture. Okay, so now the Coyotes, Kraus times two, Moser times two, which for Moser, uh, it was actually, it was his first two goals of his career. <laughs> Good for so, the kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Janis or, or Giannis maybe, Giannis Moser, and then it's Lawson Cruz or Kraus who had the other the other two two for. Uh, they had goals from Keller, Ladd, and Ghost is B here. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to get that name. I was like, "Yep, I'm not touching that one." Zach can have that one. <laughs> Which I I look at that and I'm like, it's, like I feel like somebody's pranking me because it looks like his name's like Ghost is B here. Like <laughs> yeah, that, that is li- yes, it is literally spelled. I'm gonna. It's all one word, but it is literally spelled. Just take the H out in the word ghost, but then it is ghost is be here. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm being pranked. <laughs> um, let me hang on one sec. So I want to see. 
I didn't catch his first name. So, so while while Zach's looking <clears throat> that up, see Gina, we're not the you're not the only one that struggles with the hockey names. We we do this show and we can't pronounce them half the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, 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 it's one of the, it's again one of the awesome things about hockey is you get players from all around the globe. The bad thing about that is it means that you have to have an understanding of languages that we don't speak on a daily basis, like Russian yeah. or German. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Sharks and Coyotes. Um, it, oh, and it, and it ended in a shootout. So it was like I said, it's pretty much back and forth. Um, and they they tied at seven. They went to overtime. They couldn't do anything in overtime, so it went to the shootout and. Uh, so I, I told you that Kraus got two and Moser got two, but on the flip side, the Sharks to win it, they got they got a goal from Hurdle and a goal from Couture in the shootout. That's what won the game for them. I I don't know about you. I love the shootout. I know there's a lot of hockey purists out there that understandably don't really care for the shootout. It's it's not hockey, but sure. Damn, is it entertaining as all get out when you just let let the skill players do the skill things, you know, doing doing the seventeen deke moves or the just just power their way to the net and let's see if you can stop it. <laughs> right, do the thing, move the ball, do the sports. <laughs> yep. Shane goes to this year. I just got there too. Yep. <laughs> Ghost is be here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, he's going to go by Shane from here out. We're just going to call him Coyote Shane from here out. Right. We should we should tell our buddy Shane that he's got he's got company. <laughs> oh oh oh. Larry knows Larry knows who Shane is. He know he knows who he, we're talking about. <laughs> so, I hear he he's had quite the presence in other shows on the chat. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, yes, he uh, he tends to take over whenever he shows up. So we'll get him into hockey. One of the, we'll get him into hockey one of these days. We'll get we'll take him to a game and and he will get to experience the glory that is. Coyotes have yeah, yet to, have yet to score tonight. They are one of the only games that hasn't scored yet tonight. Busy night in the NHL right now, and the goals are just continuing. The light, the you'll like this one, Zach. The Lightning are absolutely pounding. The Blue Jackets right now six to two. The Ooh, Blue Jackets yeah. had themselves a rough week last week too, didn't they? <laughs> they did. Yeah. Here, uh, let me let me finish up with uh, Coyotes and Sharks, ah. and then we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, Coyotes and Sharks. So they had a quote from Thomas Turtle, who had that uh, shootout winner. Uh, it was almost like pond hockey. I don't know what to say. Uh, we got the two points, uh, but we got lucky. We can't keep playing like that <laughs> <laughs> no you can't give up a touchdown in hockey and expect to win yeah and then logan couture had a good quote too he says yeah exactly we can't give up that many chances uh they scored seven goals against us and you're not going to win any games like that <laughs> <laughs> unless you're playing arizona yeah. <laughs> unless you're playing, or apparently, unless you're playing the Blue Jackets, because they had a rough one last week too. Yeah, they they played uh, Carolina and they lost seven to four. Uh, Hurricane scored seven straight goals to beat the Blue Jackets seven to four. So they they were down four to nothing and came back and won seven to four. Um, <sighs> says Brady Skaji uh, Skaji and Stephen Lorenz scored twice uh, and the Hurricanes had the last seven goals to beat the Blue Jackets 7-4 to four on Sunday uh, Hurricanes scored four times in a three minute and 57 minute sorry three minute 57 second span of the third to overcome a 42 deficit um, oh so they had five straight or no four, four times in okay they had five goals in that period there we go uh, that was special Lorenz said sometimes you get a game like that where a team is a little bit down and out or not getting the breaks, then all of a sudden you get one and stick to the game plan and good things happen, and that's what happened. After two periods, we kind of regrouped a bit. We said, we're right there. Once we get the next one by him, the floodgates might open. And sure enough, they did. <laughs> I, I was tracking that game on Sunday on my phone. The Blackhawks were busy just getting their heads handed to them. And uh, I... I saw the blurb come across the bottom of the television. We were flipping back and forth between 
the Blackhawks and then Notre Dame doing Notre Dame football things and losing in the oh. bowl games. Uh, well, inter- blowing a huge lead as well. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, entertaining in a different way. Uh, and I saw the blue at the bottom, and it was four to nothing Blue Jackets. I thought, oh my gosh, wow, Carolina had, had a had a rough, is having a rough one. Wow, must have you know a rough night. It's it's New Year's. Hey, you know you play an eighty two game season. These kinds of things are going to happen. And then just goal after goal after goal after goal went in. I mean, they had three <laughs> goals in a minute and 25 seconds. And it was just yeah. all of a sudden it was, it went from being, you know, four to nothing to four to three to they're down six to three. Just like that. And it was, well, okay, never mind. Carolina, you know, Carolina is <laughs> still Carolina. They can, they can do those things. My, my favorite guy, my favorite hockey name of, of the current crop scored. Nino Niederreiter had the, uh, oh, the game tying yep. goal. I just saw that one. Yep. yep he's, uh, that, I he's a good player too. I, I Nino is a good player, but give me that name. I will take a team of Nino Niederreiters. I just I love that name, but I love the player too. He's a good, good forward for Carolina. It sounds like you're you're teasing your younger sibling. Nino, Nino, Nino. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Nino, Nino. But uh, yeah, even even Bear. Uh, he scored in the third to make it five to four. Lorenz made it six to four uh, as part of the the goal bonanza. And Andre Andre Sveshnikov scored in the empty net to, for the final score. Yep. And then um, oh, uh, uh, Gustav Nyquist, former Red Wing, uh, in his six hundredth NHL game, scored shorthanded and had misses for the Blue Jackets. Ah. Uh. For, see, good for him. The, the red, you know, the Red Wings used to have good players. Yeah. Of course, they're. Of course, I, I, I pick on, I pick on them, and then I look on their at their score tonight, and they are handling things tonight against the against the Sharks, four to one at the end of two. Your Red Ooh, Wings. Nice. It was only one to nothing when I start, when I yeah. tuned to it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, um, Terrence chiming in in the chat with Beedo Beedo <laughs> doing, doing his, uh, his his minions impersonation. Oh, nice. Um, here, there was another. They had another good article on Carolina. Um, uh, Carolina Hurricanes content to just keep playing the way we were. Or rally with seven straight goals, top Columbus Blue Jackets. Um. I- Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if you're Carolina, you never really have to be worried about being down because they can just absolutely blitz the heck out of you with their with their <laughs> scoring, you know. And their and their style of of defense is just keep playing offense. So, right. so it, it, you just you never catch a break when you're playing Carolina. So yeah, I, I'm not surprised that it's just hey, all right. Okay, we spotted him four. That's fine. We'll be okay. Right. <laughs> uh, this says here, the Carolina Hurricanes, one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference all season, have bigger plans for later in 2022, like perhaps competing for the franchise's second Stanley Cup championship. For now, though, they'll settle for any type of momentum builder they can get, and, that, and they began the calendar year with a doozy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, they uh, we, did. That's a heck of a way, heck of a way to start. But yeah, I, the weekend was just full of ridiculous games. You had the Hurricanes that seven to four game. My Blackhawks got whitewashed six to one in in Nashville. They gave up three goals in about the first five minutes, and it was well, okay, we're done with that game. The Maple Leafs uh, beat the Senators six to nothing, and ooh. then we had. The fun one. We had the Winter Classic. We have got to talk about the Winter Classic in Minnesota. But before we do, we are due to take ourselves our first break of the night. This is the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio. He is Zach. I am Adam. We will be right back with more Hockey Talk right after this.
college football. And do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS? Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B., and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. fans are you looking for a sports show that maybe isn't 100 about sports then you might want to check out the sports couple perspectives right here on ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports most sports shows cover only scores and stats and while we're not opposed to that we dig a little deeper into sports issues and some of the hottest topics in athletics in addition to sports we take a journey through my neck of the woods pop culture with movie reviews of both sports and non-sports films Speaking of pop culture, make sure to participate in our game nights where we quiz each other on our specialties and you, the listeners, can win IE Sports Radio apparel. We always have a great time learning more about each other's worlds, one show at a time. So join us each week on the Sports Couple Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
Are you a Minnesota sports fan? If you are, you should join me, AJ, on my Thursday night podcast called Frozen Takes with AJ on IU Sports Radio. I talk about all things Minnesota sports from the Vikings to Leagues basketball. Every week I talk about the good and the bad of sports in the land of the frozen lakes. Join me Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for your Minnesota sports show on IU Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all of the sports. And welcome back into the neutral zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We are catching you up on the crazy weekend that was New Year's weekend in the NHL. We're going to be getting now into the winter classic between the Minnesota Wild and the St. Louis Blues. But Zach, I know you had one or two more things to kind of close the book on Carolina there. Yeah, sure. Just had two really good quotes. Uh, so Brady uh, Gajai, I guess, uh, he, he had scored two goals for Carolina. Uh, he said, it was a weird game. We felt that we were down, and I still feel, I still felt we outplayed them. Uh, we knew to just keep playing the way we did, and the goals would come, and they definitely did. And then the Columbus coach, Brad Larson, was quoted as saying, uh, we just tried to do what we could to stop their momentum. Let's be honest, it was all game. It wasn't like they ramped it up here. Uh, we built a lead, but that's a big, strong team uh, that they just get the puck sometimes, and they have it all night. That's a real good hockey team, and they just kept coming. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. The, the, that, you can never count the Hurricanes out of a game. That sounds like what you were saying earlier. Like he said, they just get the puck sometimes, and they have it all night. Like you said, the best way of playing defense is that they keep the puck away from everybody else. They just hog it the whole time. <laughs> yep, they, they just play keep away. They just, they, you cannot score if you do not have the puck. That is Carolina's, right? that is Carolina's mentality. So they just they keep like coming a, at you in waves. Like a triple option, like Army or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. So, But to go from, from Carolina to Minnesota, to the Winter Classic, where at at face off to start the game, it was minus five degrees. Five. It was negative five point seven, officially. Oh my the, god! The cold, Real. the coldest game on record in the NHL. The previous the previous owner of that distinct honor was the two thousand three Heritage Classic between the Oilers and the Canadians on November 22nd, 2003, where it was a balmy zero degrees. Woo. So, uh, uh, <laughs> some of the things they had to do to combat the cold, uh, they filled water bottles with chicken broth, uh, okay. which was made available to the players during the game. And also, they had to heat the ice so that it performed properly. Heat the ice? <laughs> they had to heat the ice up, yes, so that it it, uh, it performed and behaved like an indoor rink would. Certainly didn't bother Jordan Kiru of the St. Louis Blues. He had two goals and four assists in the Blues' 6-4 to four win in the game. Nice. Uh, his... Uh, he had, uh, it all came in the second period, uh, uh, and Jordan Binnington also made 29 saves for the blue. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, Taryn's commenting in the in the chat. Chicken broth. Wow, that's that's different. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you get off get get off the ice. You've done a shift and you just want some Gatorade. No, you got some chicken soup for the soul instead. I was just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about. Talk about ironic! They had to heat the ice up. That's like the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually not the first time I've heard of that. Uh, the Blackhawks had an outdoor game against the Penguins a few years back, where the ice actually got cracked, 
and the way they fixed it was they heated it so that enough ice would melt and fill the crack. Crazy. Yep, so it would melt, re- melt, fill in the crack, refreeze, ta-da, problem solved. Should we try that with the polar ice cap? <laughs> so, you know, well, um, I think we've tried a little too much of that with the polar ice caps, but that's getting off topic. Right. You have to turn off the heat. You have to remember to turn off the heat. You don't just leave the flame going all the time. Leave leave the burners off. Right. You you can't just leave the burners on all the time. Uh, The other, the other, uh, the other part to me from the other big takeaway to me from the, uh, from the game, uh, besides just one of the most bizarre goals you will ever see watching a, a hockey game. I'll have to retweet it with the, with the show account, um, Rem Pitlick scored a goal from below the goal line where he he was just merely attempting to clear the puck, just just get it, you know, just get it back in front of the net. It bounced off of Bennington's shoulder, then off of his <clears throat> stick, then off of his helmet, and went in. <laughs> And B- and Bennington, you could tell he just he saw the light and went seriously. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> what are the freaking odds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the heck? What the heck? But besides, but besides, besides that one, the other thing I I love the outdoor games that the NHL does. The, the NHL does an awesome job of putting on the outdoor games. I I know that they do a few too many of them that it does kind of take away the novelty a little bit when you you have the winter classic and then you have the heritage classic or you have the Honda this that or the other thing and it's like four times a year they have an outdoor game and that kind of takes away some of the novelty of it but each individual game by itself is is a lot of fun to watch they do a really good job of setting up the the stuff outside the ice you know the ice surface they had a since this game was in Minnesota at Target Field, they had an ice fishing, bo- a giant ice fishing box set up beyond the beyond the playing rink, but within the camera's eye. So anytime you were watching from center ice, you could just see this little ice fishing box in the background. I was wondering if my father-in-law wasn't in there seeing what he could catch. Um, little shanty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little little box there for ice fishing, and they just. And they're able to then they use the football style sky cam to give you some overhead shots that you otherwise some, some angles you might otherwise never get in a hockey game because in the indoor ones of course oh, you have that, right, that yeah. sky cam flying through the scoreboard you know to hit the scoreboard or something so you get that yeah. and then the uniforms are always everybody does a little unique twist on oh, for sure. on their jerseys or their sweaters <clears throat> that night the blues. <laughs> The blues one, all right. I'll, I'll give them. I'll give them credit for they went with a classic look. It was, but unfortunately, it's too similar to what they do now. Uh, it, it, okay. it was their their sweaters from the '90s, which is the same sure. as what they wear now, just lighter shades of everything. Oh, that's so lame. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a fine look. Nothing wrong with it, but yeah, nothing necessarily unique. The wild, on the other hand, had like a, a dark forest green, very similar to their current green, but then the they were wearing um, tan shorts, which to me looked very much like you're, you're a lumberjack, like you're Paul Bunyan getting ready to go, go chop down some wood. And then the front of the sweater was Minneapolis St. Paul with the, with the state in red in the center. I thought it was a very sharp look. I really liked it. Okay, yeah, I see right here. Okay, that does look really good. Yeah, I thought it was a, a very, very, very sharp look. Wouldn't want to necessarily see it every game. Keep it, keep it, you know, keep it special for for these kind of occasions. But job well done, Minnesota. All except you know losing the game. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, small, small details there. You know, when you when you fall behind five to one, that does make it difficult to come back and win. Yeah, they, you know, they did something in the playoffs last year. I'm trying to remember what it was, but that you know they had to some of the seats they covered up with tarps and stuff with COVID and everything. Um, 
with the decreased attendance. And so what did it have? It had some word there, but it had M and N. You know how, like, Sports Center has, like, the SC in the center? Mm -hmm. So they did the same kind of thing, only it had M and N for Minnesota. It was really cool. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it'll come to me, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, very, very cool. Very cool. Very, you know, just job well done by the Winter Classic. That's always kind of the, for me anyway, when you get to the Winter Classic, it's like, okay, now – now the NHL is getting serious, you know. Now we're we're kicking into we're kicking into overdrive here. We're into, you know, it's the 2021-2022 season. We're now into 2022. We know that we're we're kicking into hyperdrive. We're quick. We're kicking into overdrive a little bit. And the Winter Classic is always a nice way to to get that started. So job well done. For sure. Oh, here, here it is. Uh, it was determination is what they had on there and the m and the n in determination yes yes made the with the logo oh i guess there's the i in there too but yeah determination yeah <laughs> it worked though we know what they're we know what they're saying with it we know what they're saying nice. yes yeah. yeah for sure well I'm, I'm glad they were able to put on a good show i mean it's always always exciting when they've got the <clears throat> the winter classic and the outdoor games and and then they put them in the big, you know, football stadiums might be too big, I guess, from what some people have told me who've, who've been. But, um, yeah, if they put in the, the baseball stadium, that might be better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unique because, obviously, you do lose some of the atmosphere because the fans aren't literally on top of the action. They are, you know, this, this was at Target Field, so they're, they're playing across the middle of the – the middle of the infield so the fans are you know a distance away so you you don't okay. get the the overwhelming <laughs> roar from the crowd when the when they score but it's still the the crowd was noticeable on Saturday night and it's still it's just such a neat different look for a hockey game it's 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 special it's fun when they do them oh for sure so from from there, one more news story to to uh, get into a little bit. This will definitely have interest for Brad. I see Brad Buckingham is in our chat room tonight. He wanted to hear about some Kraken. Well, there was a story that I know Brad knows about this because I saw that he shared the tweet out there too. We also shared it on our our show's Twitter at IESR Neutral Zone again on that. Zach. Tell us about the uh, the Vancouver Canucks coach that got his life saved by a Seattle Kraken fan. Of course. This is so touching. It's so heartwarming. Um, excuse me. So Vancouver Canucks assistant equipment manager Brian Red, a.k.a. Red Hamilton, finds a woman who saved his life with a message about cancerous mole. Um <clears throat> Brian Red Hamilton owes his life to the kindness of a stranger. The Vancouver Canucks assistant equipment manager was in Seattle on October 23rd for the Kraken's first home game when he noticed a fan banging on the glass to get his attention. You know, it's a common occurrence. Uh, Hamilton, he's been in the league for nearly two decades with the Canucks. He might have just ignored. But the woman was persistent, and as Hamilton was shuffling supplies and leaving the bench, He saw the woman's phone with a message written in large, colorful font. The mole on the back of your neck is cancer. Turns out she was right. Hamilton had the mole biopsied and found it was a malignant melanoma in phase two, meaning the cancer was only on the outer layer of his skin and hadn't yet penetrated to the inner layer. (coughs) That discovery was all due to early detection by the woman now identified as Nadia Popovici, whom Hamilton will forever call his hero. Uh, Hamilton was quoted as saying, she extended my life, she saved my life. She didn't take me out of a burning car like in the big stories, but she took me out of a slow fire. The words out of the doctor's mouth were, if I ignored that for four to five years, I wouldn't be here. I, I don't even know, didn't even know the mole was there. She pointed out how she saw it boggles my mind. It wasn't very big. I wear a jacket on the bench. I wear a radio on the back of my jacket that hooks on. So the cords are there. Like, she's my hero. Uh, the search for Popovici began earlier Saturday when the Canucks sent out a tweet with Hamilton's story. In that note, Hamilton wrote he wanted to thank the woman who determined, determinedly 
alerted him to the potential health crisis. Uh, the message you showed me on your cell phone will forever be etched into my brain and has made a true life-changing difference to me and my family, the tweet said. Your instincts were right, and the mole on the back of my neck was malignant melanoma, and thanks to your persistence and the quick work of our doctors, it is now gone. We are looking for this incredible person, <coughs> and we need you to share with your friends and families to help us find a real-life hero, so I can express my sincerest gratitude. Uh, the tweet was reposted across social media, and a member of the Ladies of the Kraken Facebook group uh, Yung Yuk Ying Nelson quickly made a connection. Uh, oh my gosh, this was my daughter. She just got accepted into multiple medical schools. We have season tickets behind the opening team, opposing team, and she noticed the mole on the back of his neck, so she typed a message to her phone and knocked on the glass window to get his attention. She finally got his attention, and he looked quickly and then nodded. We didn't think anything of it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, as the story began picking up steam, Papa Vici was blissfully unaware of the stir she'd created. The 22-year-old aspiring physician was still in bed after working overnight at a suicide hotline, but had plans to attend the Kraken game against Vancouver on Saturday night. Uh, Hamilton said he hoped to be able to meet her properly and deliver his gratitude in person. 47-year-old father said he was thrown off and felt bad when Papa Vici first flashed her phone at him. He shrugged off the interaction without giving her the time of day. I'll tell her thank you, Hamilton said. <coughs> Excuse me. And then that my mom wants her to know that she loves her. And so I will let her know a message for my mom. I will thank her for being persistent. She really went over the top to get my attention. It's not easy. There's a lot going on. People are asking for things or people are saying things you don't like. You just want to get off, you want to get off the bench. But she was so persistent, and I just wanted her to know that her persistence was what saved my life. Uh, they were able to meet about 90 minutes before Saturday night's game. Um, Paul Babici says, the fact that I got to look him in the eye and hear what happened from his perspective, uh, imagine how jarring that is for you to be at work and someone just kind of looks at you and says, hey, maybe you should go see a doctor. Uh, that's not what you want to hear. So the fact that I got to see him and talk to his family members that have been really impacted by him dodging a big bullet, that's so special. Um, Papa Vici graduated from the University of Washington, plans to attend medical school in the next year. She said she's done a lot of volunteer work in hospitals, including a stint in, in the oncology ward. I saw his mole, and I was like, wow, that is a picture-perfect example of what a melanoma looks like. Um, Kraken acknowledged the story of what happened midway through the first period of Saturday's game to a standing ovation from the crowd, awesome, and announced that they and the Canucks are giving Papa Vici a joint $10,000 scholarship to help with her medical school expenses. Oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. I saw I saw the tweet from Vancouver come across Saturday Saturday morning, read it, and it was just, okay, yes, absolutely, hockey family, do your thing, find – Help find this woman. This story is amazing. I know uh, I saw Brad shared it to Brad is the host of our Northwest Territories show on Sunday afternoons and I, or Sunday mornings for him out there on the West Coast. And I know that he, I saw that he had shared it too. He's big time into the Kraken. So he was, he was sharing it too. And it was actually, it was, I, it was from Brad that I saw that they had found the woman uh, so that's that's outstanding that they that they uh, started a scholarship in her honor. That is so cool. Taryn adds in in the in the chat that it just it just goes to show that there are good people in this world of uncertainty. And yeah, it shows you that that hockey fans are people of all types. On the one hand, you have the fans that want to take off their prosthetic limbs and use them as improvised billy clubs. And then on the other hand, you have people that are going to tell the opposing coach, hey, you have cancer. You should probably get that taken care of. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. I got, I got two, little, two little, here, little bits here still. Uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up with that. But <laughs> you make me laugh too much over here. Hey, 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 it's my turn to get you one of these times. Usually, usually there's role reversal. Usually this is Zach derailing me. Ah, score me. Dinger. <laughs> uh, Hamilton admitted he was, quote, a little emotional to be back on the visitor's bench in Seattle, and he looked around to see exactly where Popovici would have been on the glass. 
<clears throat> it was happenstance that put him in her sight line to begin with. And Hamilton's future is now credit to the vigilance of one individual who simply refused to let him walk away. She's the person that did this. She said she saved my life. She needs to know her efforts were valid and bang on. And the reaction to her efforts resulted in this coming off of my body. Imagine if you're walking around and you've saved a life, but you have no idea you saved a life. I want her to, <clears throat> I want her to know, and I want to say thank you to her. That is very, that is very very cool and awesome story and a a great way to kick off the new calendar year too. All right, we oh, are sure. going to we are going to take one more quick break and then on the other side the coolest the the coolest and yes it's a hockey term but I mean this in the most awesome way. The most awesome rule possibly in all of sports exists in hockey and we got an example of it last week what am i talking about we'll find out on the other side of a break this is the neutral zone on ie sports radio he is zach i am adam we will be right back after this hey what's up sports fans you're looking for a different type of sports talk show something you haven't heard before got to check out the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday on 2 Live Stews Radio, 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sports talk at its finest. Always have great guests playing some good hip-hop. You don't want to miss it. Make sure to tune in to the BS3 Sports Show every other Saturday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. sports fans do you like wine well we've got the show for you this is let's wine about sports a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously from the classic cabernet sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before oh yeah we cover it all and we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well football hockey collegiate women's sports it doesn't matter we're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, the entire lot. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in.
What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is your host, Bean Town Brandon, from Title Town Sports, right here on the greatest, and I mean the absolute greatest podcast team, right here on IESR Sports Radio. That's right. Come join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live from the greatest city on earth, Boston, Massachusetts, here to talk about all things Boston sports. That is right, baby. We get in to talk about some Boston Red Sox, Boston Celtics, Boston Bruins, New England Revolutions, Boston College Eagles, and of course, your host's favorite team of all, the New England Patriots, baby. Woo! That's right. Come join your host, Bean Town Brandon, and let's relive all the glory days of the past, all the great championships that we've endured, all the horrible, heartbreaking losses that even yours truly chooses to forget. So you know what? Grab an ice cold Samuel Adams. Come with me to Samuel Hall as we go pick up that lobster roll we've been craving earlier in the week. Let's get some clam chowder, warm ourselves up to some title town sports. Any way you like it, we're going to have a blast. So you know what to do. Join your host, Bean Town Brandon, every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Coming at you from the home and the heartland of Boston, Massachusetts. To represent your New England and Boston sports. Weekly, right here on Title Town Sports, IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is Boston sports. See you there. Welcome back into the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We've been talking about a lot tonight here on the show, bouncing around from goals galore to to the the wild and wacky adventures of outdoor hockey to medical practice at hockey games tonight. We've we've gone everywhere. One more fun and crazy story for you here tonight. I am Adam. He is Zach here on the Neutral Zone. Thank you so much for joining us. One more fun story for us before we get out of here tonight. This is my favorite rule, certainly in hockey and probably in all of sports. The emergency backup goalie or e-bug for short. We've seen it used in the NHL from time to time. We saw last year the Carolina Hurricanes had to call in a 42-year-old emergency goalie to bail them out in the game. We've seen the Vancouver Canucks win with an emergency goalie. We have seen the Blackhawks win with an emergency goalie. Effectively, to kind of get everybody up to speed on what this is, every, every arena is responsible to have at least one or a a stable of players available on hand to play goalie for either side in the event that the two regular guys for one of the, for one of the teams, their starter and their backup both become unavailable for some reason. And they're not able to call up one of their reserves from the AHL or the ECHL in time for the game. So, like, if your starter gets sick right before the game, shortly before the game, and then your backup goes out there and gets hurt partway through the game, instead of having one of your skaters dress up and try to play goalie, they have an emergency guy to just be there and take over in net for your team for that team and it's always fun because sometimes they're they're former players sometimes they're coaches sometimes they're they play in the local rec beer league or or in this case from last week 
in the ECHL, sometimes it's a college student home on Christmas break. 19-year-old Brady DeVries grew up in Rapid City, South Dakota. He play, He has played hockey at an amateur level. He's currently attending Grand Canyon University. Semester ends. He's a freshman in college. His first college semester ends. He comes home and he gets a phone call from the Utah Grizzlies of the ECHL. The ECHL is effectively uh, the hockey equivalent of Double A, if you will. So it's not. It's it's one of the minor leagues. It's it's not uh, the the last step before making it to the NHL. There's one more step lower than that. Due to injuries and COVID protocols, the Grizzlies were without a goalie. So they reached out and called DeVries. DeVries, it's very... Usually if you're using an emergency backup goalie, he's coming in partway through the game. And it's, hey, you only need to go out there. Maybe it's just for a period. Maybe it's for 30 minutes. But we don't need you for the entire game. DeVries wound up starting the game understandably got off to a little bit of a rough start uh, gave up two goals in the first 25 minutes after that though he only gave up one more goal they went the game went to overtime and Utah won four to three they the Grizzlies were the visiting team playing in Rapid City Utah won the game four to three DeVries uh, had eight, he made 18 stops on 21 shots in getting the overtime win. He said after the game, it's always good to beat your hometown team, I guess. It's a crazy feeling. You never think it's going to happen, and then it does. That's awesome. What, what what a job for the nineteen year old kid. Now there's a story to tell when you get back to campus. So what'd you do over Christmas break? Oh, I just started a game in the ECHL for fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the uh the the Rapid City Rush head coach Scott Burt uh was impressed by him too. Quote, I'll tell you right now, I tip my hat to the kid who played tonight. He played a heck of a game. I was embarrassed for our group but happy for the kid on the other end. Nice. <laughs> so a, a very, very cool and memorable Christmas break. All right, Zach, you had, uh, you had one more quick thought from last week's ridiculousness. Then we'll give everybody some quick scores updates, and then we're going to get on out of here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one, one quote or one uh, note on what you just said about, about his, the emergency backup goalie experience they always say you know good luck is is where preparation and opportunity collide <laughs> yeah absolutely <clears throat> absolutely so yeah so zach you point you pointed out in the break that uh in all the and all the scoring craziness last week we forgot another sharks game of note please do enlighten us on something else that the sharks were part of last week Oh, but of course. Uh, uh, Evan Rodriguez and Brian Rust uh, both author half hat tricks as Pittsburgh Penguins outlast San Jose Sharks. Uh, the Penguins enjoyed a strong six goal start after a lengthy layoff. Third period lull allowed the Sharks back into the game, but Evan Rodriguez and Brian Rust came through when Pittsburgh needed it most. Rodriguez and Rust both finished off hat tricks in the third period, and the Penguins beat the Sharks 8 to 5. Uh, Sunday for their eighth straight win and first since December 19th. Um, according to ESPN Stats Information, Sunday was the first time the Penguins had two hat tricks in a single game since December 11th, 2008. Peter Sikora and Pascal Dupuis combined for six goals on that night. Uh, Penguins coach Mike Sullivan, I love the start we had. We brought a ton of energy at the start of the game. We were rewarded, but as a result, when you get up by that many goals, you're fighting against human nature to stay diligent. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. I was shocked that there were any hats left, Russ said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's face it. You don't save it on the off chance there's a second one. <laughs> right. 
for an esteemed franchise that prides itself on Stanley Cup championships and legendary names like Mario Lemieux, Yarmir Yager, and Sidney Crosby. It's not often on a random Sunday that history is made, but Rustin Rodriguez managed to add to the club's history. Um, let's see here. San Jose scored three times in the first 409 of the third period, but couldn't overcome the huge deficit. Um, if you would have told me that it would be a one goal game of two and a half to three minutes left in the third, I don't think anybody would believe you. Sharks to us, Eric Carlson said. Um, Rodriguez had scored, he has a career best 13 goals this season and has five goals and seven points in his past four games. Um, Sharks had won two straight, including a wild eight to seven win over Arizona on December 28th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we've come full circle. Um, wow. Uh, Penguins scored six or more goals in a period for the 16th time in franchise history, first since November 27th to 2019. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's about it. But yeah, talk about historic. First time since 2008 for the Penguins to get double hat tricks. <laughs> A double hat trick, yeah. Well, I know that I, that I would be one that might possibly still have my hat after the first one because my wife would kill me if I were to throw my hockey hat. She, she has told me in no uncertain terms I am not allowed to throw my hat in the case of... A, uh, a hat trick. She likes my Blackhawks hat just way too much. So I might be oh, one no. to still have mine after the first one. I think after the second one, though, I'd, I'd have to throw it at that point. You'd, you'd give in. <laughs> yeah, it would just be that. No, no. This is, I'm, I'm, this is a message from above. I am supposed to discard of this now. Yeah. Um, you're, you're talking about the, the one, the 43-year-old that came in and was the emergency, the e-bug? Yes. Uh is it he was a Zamboni driver? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's the Zamboni driver. You you never know. They they goalies yeah. come in all shapes and sizes and all walks of life. That's the takeaway from the e bug rule. So that's that's my reading for tonight. <laughs> exactly. All right, we are going to do some quick score updates, and then we have got to bounce on out of here. Some finals. The Tampa Bay Lightning put up a touchdown against the Blue Jackets tonight, 7-2. to two, The final in that one, Palat and Point and Perry, the top three players of the game. Palat, two goals and an assist, Point, a goal and two assists. Gee, Palat, <laughs> Palat and, uh, and Braden Point lighting the lamp. Gee, go figure. The Panthers over the Flames, 6-2 to two tonight. Hornquist with two goals and Montour with three assists for the Panthers and Sergei Bobrovsky, 47 saves in that one. The Boston Ooh. Bruins beat the New Jersey Devils 5-3 to three in their David, game tonight. Uh, David Pasternak, the top, uh, the number one star of the game with a, with a goal. Laser with a goal and an assist and Steen with a goal to make up the three stars there. Uh, some other games going on. You're he's right. on Brandon. I'll be happy about that one. Yes, he will. Uh, yeah, and you're going to be happy when I tell you this one too. Uh, Gina's good thing Gina had to had to bow out, so she won't hear this one. With a minute and a half to go in the third period, the Red Wings are up six to two over the San Jose yes! Sharks. Yeah, yes. yeah. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna delve too much into that one. Bertuzzi's got a couple of goals. Uh, Suter's got <laughs> Suter's got a shorthanded a goal tonight. Oh yeah, just all kinds of good stuff. And then my Blackhawks are you know doing what they do. They're actually still competitive in this one. It is Avalanche two, Blackhawks one at the end of two. Halfway through the second period, the Jets are beating the Coyotes one to nothing, and then the Predators, Golden Knights, and Flyers, Ducks are just getting underway in their game. So that will do it for all of the games tonight. Woo! We made it through the show. All right, a big thank you again to all of our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors and Background Check International Business. Thank you for continuing to sponsor us here at IE Sports Radio. Please, 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 if you are able to do so, go to our website, iesportsradio.com, check out our Patreon page, you can support us there, or just check out the fun information there for you about the station. You can read about Chris, our fan of the month. 
You can check out all the other stuff about the shows and the hosts from there. Big thank you to everybody in the chat room tonight. Thank you to Brad. Thank you to Taryn. Thank you to Gina. And of course, thank you to Larry. He is the mastermind behind everything that is IE Sports Radio. I know for he and Taryn, they are excited about what their ducks might be doing tonight. They've got the Flyers. I uh, will see uh, Cash and Chris were on earlier tonight, right before us. So a little IE Sports Radio battle going on there between the Ducks and the Flyers. That is going to do it for our show this week. Until next time, we will try to keep you updated on everything going on in the NHL. We're gearing up closer and closer and closer to the Olympics. We'll keep an eye on all that, plus any other of the fun and wacky stories that come out of hockey throughout the hockey world. He is Zach. I am Adam. Thank you so much for spending time out of your week here with us. We really do appreciate it. Until next week, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, stay out of the board, stay out of the penalty box. We will see you next week.